Thank you, Tim, for that introduction. I appreciate that. Um, this looks like an amazing event. I mean, really spectacular. I don't think I've ever spoken at something where there have been contortionists and jugglers and um, people doing things with balls. It's really quite amazing. Um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I said to my younger sister, who doesn't do anything like we do, she's an English teacher, I told her that I was coming here today to speak to about 1,800 Deloitte consultants. And she said to me, oh my God, that's great. You're speaking to the people who can change the world. Now, I have to admit that when I'd first thought about Deloitte, I hadn't really thought about it in those terms. I'd thought about the phenomenal growth rate that I know that your firm's been experiencing. I thought about everything I'd heard about how smart and motivated and bright all of you in the room were, but I hadn't initially thought that she was right, that I am speaking to a group of people who can change the world. But my sister is a very wise woman, and so I thought, let me reflect a bit upon what she said. And the more I reflected, the more that I understood what she meant. And what I hope to share with you today is why I believe that you have an amazing opportunity to go beyond the conventional, to think beyond the traditional, and to make a real difference, and also share with you why I think it makes great business sense for you to do so. But I want to begin by setting the stage so that you understand where I'm coming from and really lay out for you the new social, economic and political environment in which you all operate. An environment that really has been changing incredibly quickly over the past 10 years and is going to increase doing so. And I'd like to begin with a story. Once upon a time, people voted at elections. People believed in politicians. People's concerns were really only over their own immediate environment. And nothing more was expected of corporations but that they delivered good products at a fair price and returned a profit to their shareholders. And then things started to change. Trust in politicians started collapsing. Turnout at elections disappearing. More people voting between Pete and Glynn in the Big Brother house than voting for any political party. And people's concerns started to widen. Issues like climate change, the one in a hundred years climate shocks happening now once every few months, global inequality of an unprecedented scale, the 400 richest Americans earning now each year the same as 116 million sub-Saharan Africans. These kind of concerns started appearing very clearly on people's radar screens. And at the same time, corporations began to be perceived very differently as parties in this new politically emasculated environment, not only able but required to play a part in addressing these social, environmental and ethical ills. Now, part of why I think this happened was simply a reflection of the fact that corporations had got so big. You had the figure up there on the screen of the 100 biggest economies in the world, 51 are now corporations. Walmart sales are greater than the GDP of Central and Eastern Europe, but also it's a reflection of the geographic reach of corporations today. McDonald's in 118 countries but largely, I think what's shaping the new demands on business arises out of some particular forces that are creating a very new business context. The four main ones are 
activists, shoppers, employees, and government.